Hey guys, my name's John. Welcome to the channel. Thanks for stopping by. If it's your first time here, go ahead and hit the subscribe button, click the notification bell, then you won't miss out on any of the other videos that we're going to be producing. Today, I'm going to talk a little bit about drone privacy. I get a lot of questions from people about what a drone operator can see. Are people invading my privacy if they fly a drone over my house? So that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to fly a drone over my house and I'll show you what I can see. That sounds like something you're interested in. Stick around because it starts right now. So the first thing we should talk about is National Air Traffic's drone code. Now this is something we have here in the UK. It doesn't apply to other countries, but it's a set of advisory guidelines that the National Air Traffic Service put out to make sure that drone operators fly their aircraft safely. And more importantly, they don't interfere with other aircraft that are around. If you're interested in the drone code, uh, I did a video on it a few months ago. You can find a link to it up here. So one of the questions I always get is, could a drone be used by criminals to scope out properties to find out what's the sort of best ways to get in and out? The reality is most of the information that you can gather from a drone is available already. Uh, you only have to go to Google Maps, type in your address, click the satellite view, and you can take a look and see what Google has taken from either low-flying aircraft or from satellites. That will give you more than enough information about the routes in and out of a property. So the first place we should start is with the National Air Traffic application. This is a free app that drone operators can download, put on their mobile phone, and it means that wherever you go in the UK, you can check for no-fly zones, you can check for restricted flight areas, or just areas where there's a warning in place to, to airmen. So if I zoom in on the local area, you can see there are uh, orange areas around the local play parks, around the local schools. So these are advisory warnings. These are to let you know that there may be possible privacy issues if you're flying in this area. And you can understand that. People might not want their children being filmed while they're playing in the park or when they're being taken or to or picked up from school. So it's a great application. It allows people to see where the no-fly zones are. And with the latest software in the drones, this information is actually uploaded into the drone. So if you try and fly in a red zone, in a no-fly area, the drone actually won't take off. So what we're going to do today is I'm going to take the drone up to 25 meters. Now that's half the height recommended as the minimum altitude to be flying at by national air traffic. The reason I'm going to do that is just to show you what can be seen from 25 meters. Now to give you a frame of reference, I'm going to use this big orange landing pad. This is almost a meter in diameter, so it'll give you some idea of how high up you are when you see this disappear to become a small dot. We'll take the drone then up to 50 meters, which as I said, is the minimum altitude that national air traffic recommend that you, you keep above people and property. So when we get to 50 meters, I'm gonna unblur the area around me. Below that, for privacy reasons, I'm gonna blur out all my neighbors' houses so that you can't actually see what's going on in their gardens. But once we get to 50 meters, you'll notice only really large objects stand out. So you can maybe see a trampoline in a garden or a garden shed but you can't really see any detail. Now, just in front of my house is a water pumping station, and there are some workmen in there today. So as we go up, keep an eye on the workmen. Notice how small they are. Notice how difficult it is to identify them. Once you get above 50 meters, it's hard to actually tell that they're human beings. So that's it. Let's get the drone in the air, and let's see what we can see. So we'll slowly take the drone up to 25 meters. As this is under the minimum permissible altitude recommended by the National Air Traffic Service, you'll notice that I've blurred out my neighbor's gardens. But what I really want you to see here is that notice I can't read the number plate on my car any longer, even though it's pointing directly up. And this is only at half the recommended altitude. So we'll now increase the height, we'll take the drone up another 25 meters, up to 50 meters. 
And again, until we reach the minimum permissible altitude, I'll keep all the neighbors' gardens blurred. But you'll notice the workman in the pumping station in the sort of top right of the picture. You can actually see there's a person there, but there is no way you can identify them from this picture. So let's add another 25 meters. We'll continue to climb. We'll take the drone up to 75 meters. Now that we're above 50 meters, we're no longer below the minimum altitude specified by national air traffic. So therefore there's no need for me to blur the image any longer. As you can see, you can see people's gardens, but it's very difficult to make out anything other than very large objects, like cars or maybe the odd trampoline in the garden. These images are of no more use to anybody than those that can be easily accessed on Google Earth. We're now at 100 meters, and I'll continue to push up another 20 meters, which is the maximum altitude drones are allowed to fly in the UK. As you can see, this is no different from any other Google Earth or Google Maps image that you can access anywhere on the internet. Well, I hope you found that interesting. As you can see, once you get up above 50 meters, only really large objects stand out. It's almost impossible to identify people. It's, all, it's definitely impossible to identify who a person is. You might be able to say there is a person there. I, find it, I sometimes find it difficult to find out whether it's male or female. Um, you can't read car number plates, you can't really see an awful lot of detail, unless an object is pretty significant, and we're talking the size of a garden shed or more, they don't really stand out. So it's not for me to say whether you think your privacy has been invaded, but I hope you'll find this video useful and you'll understand that not every drone that's in the sky is a threat, it's not there doing something bad, it's maybe just somebody out having a bit of fun with their aircraft. Thanks very much for joining me. If you have enjoyed it, don't forget, click that subscribe button. There'll be more videos posted every few days. Hopefully you'll see something else that you like. Thanks very much. And if you have been, thank you for watching.